Hello and a very warm welcome. I'm Gitanjali Mathur and you're watching GM Online Media Presents Incredible Journeys, Brands and Leaders. Today we'll introduce you to a firm that serves the global engineering sector with high quality precision engineered power transmission products and solutions. Premium Transmission Private Limited is a part of Mr. Karan Thapa's broad diversified industrial conglomerate which is overseen by a highly experienced management team. Take a look. The power transmission sector in India has experienced exceptional expansion in recent years with increased line length and transformer capacity. There are a handful of companies that have the capability and prowess to meet these demands hands-on and premium transmission is right on top in that list. A manufacturing company with a rich history and experience of 61 years in the industry, premium transmission enjoys the leadership position in the segment. In terms of industrial gearboxes, premium caters to 20% of the total market demand and 9% for the geared motors. Premium Transmission is also the largest indigenous manufacturer of fluid couplings in India. It is but natural that to manage and guide an incredible brand such as Premium Transmission, you will need an exceptionally incredible leader too. So please do welcome Mr. Neeraj Basaria, who is the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer at Premium Transmission. So welcome to the show, Neeraj. Thank you, Geetanjali. So Neeraj, let's start with the journey first. So take us through the transformation journey from Premium Transmission to Premium Group. Yeah, so uh, this is a 61 year old company and uh, it started as a Greaves Cotton. Uh, initially, this uh, was a business vertical of uh, gear manufacturing in Greaves Cotton. Uh, then in 2004, business was growing very fast, so it was felt that uh, to be made at a separate company. And 2004, we the premium transmission actually born as a separate company. In 2011, we invested in acquiring a German company from Rexnord. Rexnord Stephen and then Premium Stephen was born, which is a very uh, state of art operation in Hamen in uh, near Hanover in Germany. And we are doing good there and serving European market from there. Uh, in 2019, uh, we felt that uh, service of our products and the similar products from other manufacturers is very important. So we incorporated uh, a business vertical premium care and basis the renewable energy and current government com commitment uh, to the renewable energy segment and upcoming surge in the Indian as well as the global market, we have incorporated a company called Premium Motion where we will be making uh, right now for service uh, for solar industry, uh, product manufacturing as well as service of uh, those products. So what was the original vision and objective for Premium Transmission and how has the vision changed, rather evolved with time? The vision has always been to remain the market leader because uh, you know the investor, uh, now this is a Karan Thapar group company and Mr. Thapar has always said in whichever business we are, uh, we should be the leader. Okay, So business in, since the beginning has been to remain as a market leader uh, in this segment. Uh, but over a period of time, we don't want to remain market leader only by the virtue of uh, giving the highest ever top line. Uh, we have tried to become market leader by way of our investment in engineering and technology. So Neeraj Premium appears to have technology and quality in its DNA. So when it comes to uh, product research and development, how crucial is it for Premium Transmission to keep one step ahead of its competition? As we discussed, you know, that we want to be, uh, our vision is to uh, remain the technology leader in this industry. And uh, so for um, us, for premium transmission, uh, research and development and engineering is extremely, extremely crucial. Because in this industry, if you are not addressing uh, the customer uh, requirement, anticipating customer requiring and addressing it uh, proactively, then you can never remain a leader. Okay, so our objective is to remain a leader. So for us, it is extremely, extremely crucial that we focus on uh, research and development. We develop product and solution proactively and we provide it to the customer. Right. So while we were uh, discussing about the company's journey, you mentioned premium motion. So tell us more about this venture. Yeah. The, in, uh, we incorporated a company premium motion uh, in uh, January 2021. And this is basically uh, right uh, till that we have been in uh, industrial gear boss segment. We are making gear heads, we are making fluid couplings, we are making large industrial gear boxes, smaller industrial gear boxes. 
but now we have a expertise anything which moves to control that movement or give it a movement basis the requirement so now uh, is as per the solar uh, energy renewable energy segments there are certain requirements which require a specific motion control power mechanical power transmission and several other applications like panel cleaning several other application like dampening of the motion and following the sun system solar tracking which we call in these days so we thought that there is a uh, need in india that somebody who has edge on technology and uh, who can uh, do the engineering and research on these subjects so we have a capability that's why we incorporated premium motion and which we say that as of today in the country is the only organized group which are developing and supplying to the global market these kind of components right so now lastly i would like to know what are premium transmissions growth plans for the future the first is uh, we say you say the growth plan we call it sankal our sankal is to become a 1000 crore company by 2025 and uh, we are up to it along with uh, our incorporation of premium motion premium care and premium transmission our flagship company so uh, growth uh, we are on the journey of uh, a, a very high and aggressive growth and uh, the best part is that it has been supported by the market so thank you so much neeraj for taking out time and i wish you all the very best for the future and uh, thank you for sharing such insights about the business thank you geetanjali pleasure was all mine in this rapidly changing world it is but a necessity for any business to keep evolving with the help of new technologies and innovation and premium transmission is leading by example in this space as well and now we're joined by mr raghavendra kini who's the chief operating officer at premium transmission so welcome to the show raghavendra hello geetanjali so raghavendra my first question to you is how much importance would you give to the use and introduction of technology uh, in the manufacturing and production activities at premium yeah uh, historically if you see uh, premium transmission has been a front runner when it comes to technology usage as well as uh, technological upgradations uh, when we look at uh, our products basket it's not only about technological upgradations we have also looked at uh, state of art uh, design centers state of art manufacturing capabilities and then testing capabilities we don't limit ourselves to only products or manufacturing we also look at the business processes where we engage with the customers or suppliers to name them it is about product selections of softwares enquiry management customer portals then vendor portals these are the things which we have revamped uh, maybe a couple of years back and we are all still pursuing how to upgrade it then we have installed a lot of mobile apps which helps to customer to have a better experience with premium transmission right uh, so what about the technological trends and the market when it comes to gearbox and geared motors and other similar items yeah uh, gitanjali i take your question in two parts right one is about the market and one is about the technology trends right so uh, when it comes to market uh, two years back we were hit by a pandemic right and after that uh, uh, the market has been very robust uh, with a, supported by a pent up demand across all the sectors a uh, premium is, is able to encash this also and uh, uh, we have also seen kind of uh, pent up demand helping our business and uh, today we are at a, a level we are much above the pre covid levels and we expect this trend to continue uh, maybe another couple of years the right. second point what what you spoke about is the technology right uh, today we see that customers are more demanding on the solutions rather than mere products right so how we are prepared for this kind of a situation uh, when it comes to uh, these kind of demands from the customer uh, we have a good amount of uh, 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 setup set in terms of uh, handling the sales right we have a pan india presence of uh, sales engineers and we also have around 70 to 80 engineers working in premium transmission and engineering function so what we do is we collaborate engineering and sales people and then look at the applications of the customer and uh, what about manufacturing innovation do you believe that additive uh, manufacturing and concepts like augmented reality will be critical for future success yes surely uh, why i feel that is uh, uh, you, we can only always have a sustainable growth when you look at innovation as one of the driver right and in a premium also what we have done is uh, we have invested in uh, 3d printing as scanning as well as uh, 
proto development uh, which is used for a proto development we have developed a lot of new products through uh, 3d printing machine which we have invested in our engineering facility what happens uh, with this machine is uh, it is not only reduces the time for innovation because we can develop the parts very fast with that it also reduces the cost of innovation right if both the things it will help us right. so uh, and my final question to you would be what about uh, uh, growth plans growth plans at uh, premium transmission for the future yeah uh, last two years have been pretty excellent for us and uh, we are now riding with that momentum and next three years, we, we would like to achieve kind of a milestone, right, uh, which is which is around 1,000 crores. I think we are we are having a kind of a now uh, process that how do we measure ourselves on a yearly milestone uh, to achieve that kind of a milestone of 1,000 crores. And team is geared up, right? Team is geared up. Internally, processes are been uh, revamped. We are looking at kind of a, a good amount of uh, capex investment, people investment to achieve that kind of a growth. And I am confident that uh, that this is something which we should be able to achieve uh, with the kind of plans what we have. Thank you so much, Raghavendra. It was a pleasure to hear about the operational insights at Premium Transmission. Thank you. Uh, it's my pleasure. We thank you. With this, it's time for a short break. But you don't go away. There's a lot more to be discussed about Premium Transmission and its business. We'll be right back. Premium Transmission has geared up to provide end-to-end -end solutions defined by accuracy and innovation to keep up with the changing industry pace. The company aspires to grow exponentially in the international market and transform itself into a truly global player with strong R&D, design and engineering expertise along with the state-of-the-art manufacturing units in Pune, Falta and Aurangabad as well as one overseas manufacturing unit in Germany. The company is well and truly on course to achieving its future goals and objectives. So joining us now is Mr. Kostub Roplekar, who is the Chief Financial Officer of the company. Welcome to the show, Kostub. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. So Kostub, uh, tell us about Premium Transmission's financial initiatives, the success and goals you have achieved and the ones you're working towards. So. Uh Premium Transmission is in the business of uh, core manufacturing uh, where there is a strong product which is supplied across many categories of customers and business segments. So our financial uh, strategies are tuned to the nature of the business, to the type of customers, the type of vendors and of course to have a very strong balance sheet when we are having a profitable growth. Okay. So the few things that have worked well for us over the last three years or so is uh, First and foremost is when we look at a balance sheet strength, okay, how do we manage the working capital cycle? Uh, for the inventory, we look at various uh, silver bullets where we control the procurement and we keep it in line with the requirements of the what is getting delivered mm -hmm. at a particular point of time. So that has helped us to not only get through the current year targets with flying colors, but also have a lot in our kitty for investing for the future. So when I say that, we have introduced an integrated pricing process. Most of our products are customized products, which means that uh, when we get an inquiry, there's actually a design that happens. There is a product uh, which uh, then gets uh, after the procurement happens and then a supply happens. So as a result, there's a good predictability of the likely margins, the profitability. And we also have a good review mechanism where we come to know where things can go haywire and uh, we can nip the coil in the bud. Uh, the last but not the least is for a capital intensive industry, uh, we have looked at a frugal capex cycle which ensures that the financial ratios are very very good, maybe the best in class across industries and that we consider as a very good achievement for the last three to four years. Right. So now uh, coming to the investment strategies, tell us more about it and the approach uh, to initiating new financial strategies. I think we have a good playbook now which is established 
there is good functional acumen there is good business acumen and the synergy across teams is very good okay uh, while i say that uh, the next 3 uh, to 5 years journey based on our business plan is uh, of course different than what we encountered and as we have seen in the last 2 years you know any strategy is as good as what happens in the next month next day or even in next hour so uh, having a strategy where we uh, marry the short term and the long term objectives is the first part which means that always having the ears to the ground and also planning and executing according to that so our strategies will again look at the quality of the balance sheet should not deteriorate why i say that is because uh, we have already reached a certain health status now keep on doing health check and ensure that no new errors no new symptoms arise and it supports the sustainable profitable growth that we have planned for uh, when i look at capex uh, you know in investing uh, we have uh, four things we are focused on the two e's and the two p's mm -hmm. the two first is engineering second is equipment uh, the p is the uh, processes and the people mm -hmm. of course all this is uh, you know supporting the product which is our which is our hero or which is the king okay that is what sells and uh, that is what is very important technically So this is our overall uh, plans, you know, which are in sync with what where we see ourselves three years down the line. So my next question is about uh, company's capex. So uh, what do you focus on primarily when it comes to capital expenditure? Uh, see, this will always be a relevant question because we are looking at core manufacturing. So the first thing that will come to mind is it is capital intensive, mm -hmm. and. Uh, you know the growth or any future journey is directly married to the value of investing that we can do so two years back uh, we realized that we have to plan for the future so as far as property plant and equipment is there we have a sustained four year deployment strategy uh, which will obviously not be similar every year but currently for the next two years we are focusing more on new technology and the replacement theory for what is getting worn out and then we also have enhancement of the production capacity which is absolutely necessary uh, when we look at uh, capex uh, for the overall group for the company because we have three companies we are also focusing on uh, automation as one of the key drivers for which capex will be required so whether it is automation of manufacturing processes whether it is automation of many manual processes which uh, the other functions other than manufacturing do whether it is cyber security whether it is engineering softwares and hardwares which can give us a glimpse of what products are to come and how well placed we are to design them so it's a complete pie chart you can say well distributed a 360 degrees view so costum now if we talk about the challenges so what are the issues that you face when it comes to pricing and how do you uh, remain cost competitive in the current market scenarios yeah i think it's a million dollar question and uh, that's why we run a business to have profitable growth so what has happened is uh, there was a certain pricing mechanism we had where we look at what are the likely inputs components and their cost make up a cost sheet and then we look at what margin we can charge in a fairly stable scenario then the last 18 months as we know anything has happened but stability and now even calling it instability would be wrong because it continues how does it affect us is because uh, the gearbox has 80 85% of steel and related metals as inputs so as you can imagine uh, you know our input costs have gone up in a big big way mm -hmm. and uh, we had to uh, evolve a mechanism by which we can either charge it to the customers or we also look at some cost controls so what we decided that uh, on top of the pricing mechanism that we i explained to you previously we also started looking at the why's and how's of what is happening to have a better grip of what is likely to happen in the next 6 months so you can say it is a dynamic cost income pricing uh, mechanism what is good about it is that we don't operate like uh, costing is a domain of finance and then pricing is the domain of sales in fact right from engineering to supply chain to operations all are involved in giving this input and the output is also jointly owned by everybody on cost effectiveness uh, we do uh, try and sign long term long term contracts for the key components with our vendors that is the playbook so that volatility does not hit us every month uh, but as we go forward that may not be a reality but at the same time through excellent relations and uh, business partnering and the way we engage with them we have created a vendor portal for transparency with them all that will uh, manifest itself by you know them actually looking at a long term view with us rather than just trying to make the most out of each order that they supply to us
Right, and about the uh, growth plans for the future, tell us about it. Uh, we feel we are in a sweet spot, okay. We have seen very good growth and we have built up a very, very nice momentum. Uh, if we talk about up across the length and breadth of the company, I think everybody is tuned into where we are going, how we are going and uh, they are very excited, that is the best part. So that is very palpable and we are loving the environment that we have created for the future. Well with that, thank you so much Kosto. it was a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you very much. In any organization, the success of the business depends on its employees and stakes are even higher for a manufacturer like Premium Transmission. As a result, Human Resource Department becomes all the more important and a catalyst in developing, reinforcing and changing the culture of the company. At Premium, we strongly believe that people are the prime movers. Our highly skilled employees are the key in providing customized solutions to our customers. So we take every possible effort to take care of our people. We have various initiatives for our people to take care of their well-being and keep them motivated at all times. Keeping in view our values, people development and engagement, which are the primary drivers, basis which all our initiatives get designed. We have a program called Prabal, which focuses on people development, which would not only enhance the employee's skill set, but also support our people in their career progression and in turn creating future leaders. We also have various forums where people get an opportunity to interact with senior management team and express their views. We also have a very participative rewards and recognitions program which we have designed by the people, for the people and of the people wherein we recognize and reward them for every small success or achievement. We have this umbrella program called Swati which we had launched in 2019 and has been successfully running since then. This initiative has been started with an idea to have skilled workforce for the industries and most importantly to promote diversity on the shop floor. The objective of this program is to provide opportunities to the girls who have financial constraints to study further post doing their 12th science. Under this program, these girls not only get a diploma completion certificate from a recognized university, but also enhance their skill set and also are made employable. We have a tie-up with one of the premier institutes like Symbiasis, wherein we, we have designed a course for them for two years in which they not only get trained on technical skills but also on the soft skills. Technology and innovation are the growth levers for premium transmission. With product quality and EHS viewed as the cornerstone for 360 degree success, premium believes in long-term profitable growth and the manufacturing behemoth is well on its way to achieving its financial objective of rupees 1000 crores in revenue by year 2025 through both organic and inorganic expansion. So this was the story of Premium Transmission. We'll be back with another story of an incredible brand and its leaders in another episode of GM Online Media Presents Incredible Journeys, Brands and Leaders. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye-bye and take care.